To Dario, wow, it seems like your engineers are always figuring out new alloys and new types of strings. It's a company that folds in environmentalism, and recycled packaging, and all of that feels good. But the bottom line, the strings are great. Hey, this is John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. We're at the historic Ryman Theater in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm with Andre Chumley, who is Pat Matheny's tech. Hey, Andre, thanks so much for joining us today. An honor, John. Great. All right. I, I watch RR all the time. So okay, yeah, yeah. Great, great. great. Well, yeah. well, thank you, man. Well, okay, I got to hear about this guitar. Wow, well, it's, uh, it's one of the Ibanez Pat Matheny models, you sure. know, the PM. Yeah, um, which at this point, he came out with that signature, gosh, it's got to be like 35. I was going to say, I was going to say 30-ish, but yeah, yeah, you're probably right, like maybe longer. Been around a while. So there's been a bunch of them, yeah. and there's a bunch of different shapes, different colors, but this is kind of his number one. It's got a Charlie Christian pickup in it. How cool. And uh, just an amazing sound. Um, you know, what else is unique about it? It, it? He calls it the 175. We all call yeah. it the 175. Sure, that's where it all started. That's where it all started. Yeah. And, and you know, the family of Gibson guitars he loves, and he's got a lot of old Gibsons. Um, and uh, yeah, just a really great, um, it's a, a beautiful jazz box. What so, can we say? Okay, tell me about that, that low string. Yeah, what yeah. What is uh, that? <laughs> well, uh, before I forget too, the Charlie Christian pickup, it's also got a microphone in there. Right. Yeah, all his guitars have, uh, just about all of them have two signals, and we got uh, XLR and a quarter inch. He's got a microphone in there to get that beautiful sound of the body of a guitar. Right. And that's especially uh, significant on the acoustic guitars. Sure. Incredible thing. So something um, uh, people should check out. Uh, so the strings on here, um, it's uh, this low string. He wanted to do some bass lines this year. <laughs> so we experimented with like a 68, a 74. And finally we got to 80 and he said, yeah, that's, that's the gauge. And how did you deal with that? I mean, like, how uh, did you, how? A lot how? of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of just trial and error. Yeah, what was it uh, tuned to? We, we work with the Dario, who, oh. who's great and takes care of us. And, and you guys too. And um, so I kept calling Andy and Steve, hey, send me yeah. some 78. Send yeah, me some. Yeah. So we, we kept trying and maxed out what the tuning machine could fit. Yeah. And then Mike and the good people at Ibanez sent me a custom tuning machine. Oh. They drilled it out. So that's an 80. I think I can maybe get like an 82 or something in there. And then you could you got to yank it through. But it's an 80 flat wound. Wow. And it sounds great. It's, what, what's it tuned to? What do you do? Uh, it's an octave down E. Wow. Yep. Okay. So otherwise standard tuning. Um, Crazy. Yeah. Usually he's got like a 52 in the bottom. Huh. But... Um, yeah, so that's uh, really cool. And the ball end, you know, it's, yeah. it's right there. And, and the, nut, the nut behaves. I didn't have to do anything with the <laughs> nut. It, it hangs in there. Pat's always experimenting with, with gauges, you know. Um, he'll just say, you know, as a lot of guitarists do, but he especially does it because he's looking at the tone. He's looking at how things ring. On the, uh, the um, Picasso, which we'll take a look at. Yeah. He's done a lot of changes on that on the low strings okay. to get it where it is. So great. But yeah, this is. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing too. We were talking about before. This thing right here. It's got a little piece of rubber to protect. People have seen um, early pictures of Pat with uh, a toothbrush there, right? Or a pencil. People yeah. ask me all the time. Yeah. This is. I don't have a cable right here, but this is to hang the cable off. 
That's, I'm it's, glad so you it's cleared great. up that mystery. So it doesn't, yeah. Because I, I never knew what that toothbrush or that one sort of thing was. About. None of us did, right? I went for years, like, why does he have a toothbrush? <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so there we go. Oh, that's great. Okay, an excellent start. Let's look at more. All right. Um, well, if there ever was a signature sound, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for all the guitars, he's changed in and out of his uh, arsenal and his, his paint, his, you know, his toolbox of, of guitars. Wow, this has really been around. Uh, 1982, and, and the big Matheny fans will know uh, the Off Ramp album. Sure. And that album opens up with this incredible sounding guitar. Yeah. Um, and you know, uh, a few people played these Roland since over the years, but Pat has kept it as part of the, the palette. Right. I mean, it's really just, and I'm always, as a fan, you, you put on a new Pat album and you're listening and it's going this direction, that, that direction. And, and there it is, you know, yeah. it, that sound. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, and sometimes you don't expect it. It's like right after a, uh, you know, a Michael Brecker sax solo yeah. or right after a beautiful piano solo and you go, all right, yeah. <laughs> got me again. Yeah. So, so it's, it's just as valid of a voice, in my opinion, to his nylon strings, to his jazz sure. guitars. And so this is one of them. He's got a number of them, um, of the guitar controller. This is the Roland uh, GR303 and the synth itself is the 300. Uh, and um, it's an analog synth. Wow. It's a polyphonic analog synth, uh, so I have to tune it every day like a mini Moog. Wow. Yeah, and um, so it's just a beautiful synth. This is a hex pickup, so it's got six little pickups. All six strings go into the guitar. There's actually, uh, into the synth, there's actually switches. You can turn off any of the strings if you want. Huh. So you can really control what's happening. Um, otherwise, you got controls on here, typical synth controls for controlling LFO and vibrato depth and whether there's fuzz or not, and a filter sweep. Uh, so a lot of the typical things on any synth, and then you could blend guitar and synth 50%, 100%. Right. He leaves it on 100%, leaves the filter kind of open, and uh, plays it as a guitar too. It's a pretty nice guitar. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay, so this is 40-year-old technology. Where do you get parts? They don't, I mean, like, yeah, it's, gotta be, cause um, it's, gotta, it's, it's a road warrior, so it takes absolutely, some hits. Absolutely. Well, the good news is, I mean, just like there's fenders and different things, yeah. that the parts are still pretty good. Yeah. This is even newer, so knock on wood, uh, everything's pretty robust. There are some people who work on them. Yeah. Um, there's a guy named Wayne Jones that we got to give a shout out to Wayne Jones. Uh, his website is jones.com with two S's. He is the genius on this whole world of stuff. Oh, so he does repairs, he's got parts, he knows who has parts. Yeah. I, I talk to him all the time, he will tell you, oh, there's this company in Japan that makes the exact yeah. replacement for, um, and so he's, he's- He's on your favorite list, he's, the speed dial. He's speed dial, <laughs> and, and I've studied his stuff for years, because just working for other artists too, you know, working for um, Adrian Ballou or Steve sure. Howe, that Al Demiola used the VG, 88 oh, right. and, the, and I used to go to this guy's website to get oh. manuals and info so he's been a long time resource for me yeah and he's really the biggest nerd oh, and all, yeah, all this stuff my, my so, kind of guy That's yeah great. but these are you know there there's people who repair them and yeah. there are parts out there so uh oh, that's great. yeah Okay, I love that the pickup selector long since leave it off. and he <laughs> leave it there. This yeah. stuff too, like I, these are glued down because he wants them off. Okay, and that too. So <laughs> he gets the sound he wants and then does the rest of it on the box. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Great. All right. Well, let's look good at with more. this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about this. We have one of our what we kind of call our amplified electrics, uh, amplified acoustics, because it's acoustic guitar and. Note the <laughs> bizarre yeah. tuning, but it's right. it's a, a beautiful. I love Taylor guitars. They're really oh, yeah. kind of a dark horse, um, but it's a Taylor eight string. You know, the middle the, the the middle two strings are double coarse strings. Okay. And um, so those are in. Okay, those are octave octave off. Octave off. Yep. Okay. And and we initially tune it in baritone tuning, so A D G C E A. Okay. But he's done a custom tuning on it. Um, yeah, hearing that open, I couldn't even guess. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, it's, I don't know you know, what's going on there. he'll often do it for the piece he's working on or the, you know, just where he wants to take things. Sure. Once again, you notice there's a mic in there, like all the guitars, again, uh, right. balanced pickup, 
a balanced output for the mic and a regular pickup. Um, the other thing that's unique about this in the show is it goes through the Kemper. Oh, really? Yeah, so he's, he's, he's dialed up a patch for the Kemper that really sounds great, and he does... We, he does a piece every night, and now that the tour's on, these are not spoilers, but he does a piece every night that he, he kind of nods to his Zero Tolerance for Silence album. Right. Which uh, is... Uh, controversial record. Controversial record. <laughs> uh, yeah. I loved it. I, I, was, I was, you know, and still I was a big fan of, you know, uh, Derek Bailey and yeah. kind of Henry Kaiser and Elliot Sharp, all those kind of weirdos. Yeah. meaning that in a good way yeah yeah and so when this album yeah. came out i was like wow that's cool and pat had hinted at little strange moments right. in solos and things so that's a great record and he, there's another record the sign of four I that people know. yeah it's a very it came out on knitting factory records so oh. it was very low print uh numbers two drummers two guitarists so pat derek bailey uh paul wordico who was in the pat metheny group for many years and greg bendian Huh. who's a great drummer percussionist played with um cecil taylor for years oh. and uh, uh yeah, a lot I'm, of his own i'm not familiar with him yeah a lot, a lot of nels klein albums he's oh, got okay. a lot of a lot of work with nels klein oh. anyway this quartet parked at the knitting factory for two or three nights and two guitars two drums just this incredible wall of kind of avant-garde sound paintings and, yeah. and strangeness so anyone that likes that kind of stuff dig that up um okay you can probably find that but I, I love when pat goes off road yeah i love you know all this material it's one of the reasons i got here probably but i um i really love when he takes it out to other regions because i really think that informs your melodic stuff you, sure. you're you know one of the things with the beatles revolution number nine yeah the fact that they knew how to go that far out right i think it's just my opinion that hones your skill writing beautiful melodies yeah I just think then you have the whole so that's what this guitar does every night a lot of looping and weird stuff love and, it uh, there we go love it man yeah okay very cool let's um, see more so this one here this is one of the gems uh, and there's about 25 of them uh, meaning guitars that Linda Manzer has made for Pat she's the great luthier from Toronto based um, mm. so um, you can find Linda Manzer on, on, on the web, of course, Manzer Guitars on, on social media and all that. So she's made guitars for Pat for decades now, uh, 30 years at least. And this is uh, with the Linda Six. Just a steel string, you know, like one of your basic kind of acoustic designs, but it is so good. It sounds so great. Uh, you heard a little bit of the sound check before. Sure. Just uh, not much to say other than one of the best made steel strings I've, I've played. Beautiful. Um, it really has a classic, a classical look to it. Looks looks nylon, but yeah. It does, right. She, the, the cut of that and yeah. kind of the, the color of the wood. Yeah. And she does a bunch of nylons for him. But she's made a lot of different guitars. So that's the Linda 6. Okay. The steel string. He's got, a, he's got two of these at least. Yep. Beautiful. Wow. The Picasso, folks. Um, spelt with a K. Um, also known as the 42 string guitar. Um, <laughs> once again, Linda Manzer, and um, you know, as Pat jokes in the show every night, he, she's one of the few people he can go to and say, hey, I wonder if we could, uh, you know, <laughs> what would happen if you built X, Y, Z? And right. she doesn't run out of the room. And he, he kind of drew this on a, a, like the classic, on a napkin, you know, on a, wow. a piece of paper, kind of mapped it out and said, could this happen? And she did it. Um, it's about a thousand pounds of pressure. Wow! It's, I bet. Yeah, it's. How does it just not explode, right? It's really incredible work. And you know what? I'll also say. People ask all the time about the tuning. In a hurry, I can do it in just under ten minutes now, Ooh. which is. But I, I like I like twenty, <laughs> if I can, twenty-five. But but you know, fifteen, twenty minutes. You need five necks. This is pretty standard tuning with the middle two an octave up. And the low string, pretty standard as an EAD, GBE, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Standard in what uh, world? Yeah, so standard on, right? guitar, standard <laughs> guitar with, with yeah. the low strings. Those are flat wounds. Yeah. So those are, I think I've got an 80 and a 90 on there right now. Or, wow, or, man. We've changed it around so much. 90 yeah. or 100, I got it written down somewhere. Uh, and then you've got kind of a D minor. 
scale there, a D, E, F, uh, G, there's a, no sharps in there, but just, yeah, a lot of Ds and D minor. Yeah. And then this one's... Wow. Stravinsky on a harp or something. And you can hear all this sympathetic, yes. you know, overtones a lot of right stuff. now, man. A, wow. a lot of, just a lot of C, D, G. There's a C sharp in there. So, and this one's like a harp kind of a thing, a lot of half steps. Haven't tuned it today, folks, but that's pretty, that's no. ballpark. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that was, that's what I was going to say about it before, that if the temperature and humidity is consistent, I take this out and it's just about in tune sometimes, wow. which blows my mind. I mean, okay. and sometimes there's a period of time, like if it's in a stable storage in our warehouse, I'm, a couple weeks you go back and some of the necks are just just a couple cents out, wow. which is crazy. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, but it's very susceptible to temperature. And when we're on tour in the winter, you come in, it hits the heat. Oh, sure. Or in the summer, AC comes on. Right. The and pitch all, changes. Yeah. All those finish cracks, you can see it's had some, Yeah. the, the weather's done some stuff. It's it's time to, to take it in and do some stuff on the cracks. Yeah. yeah. Um, Beautiful. But, Look at these controls. So man. you got five, uh, I'm sorry, four um, volume. Wow. And then you got a master volume and a master tone, and you got switches to turn each one on and off. So you can kill switch any of these. Oh. It actually has the hex pickup in there. Oh. So you could do, um, you could send out uh, pitch to a VG99 or any of those yeah. GP10 boss unit, any of that stuff. Um, wow. So that's the... Um, okay, that's, that's incredible, man. The Picasso. Yeah. Thank you, Linda Manzer, for, you know, taking Pat <laughs> to, right. this, to the spheres with this. Yeah, brilliant. So uh, another Pat Metheny model, a few years or older. This one, of course, with the single humbucker. Um, they all have the mic in there, so there's the mic mount. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Um, what, what strings? Okay, so this is in standard tuning. Standard tuning. So this is, of all the guitars you can see, this is the first, like, Standard, just a standard yeah, guitar. Yeah, standard well, guitar. and then it's got the, the strap holder thing yeah, there, yeah. the the, well, um, the cable holder yeah, yeah. thing. Um, yeah, standard for Pat and Yeah, it's uh, there's so many string gauges in my brain. I've got a chart actually. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you guys the chart. Yeah. Uh, this is probably 11 to 52, like 11, 15, thir 30, 38. Uh, Diodarios, yeah, yeah. these Diodarios, they're great. We love the NYXLs. I mean, right. that really was man, they cracked the code on that one, you know. Right? There's hype, and every string company says, "Oh, we." Yeah, find yeah. And when I first tried those, I was like, "These feel different." And then yeah. they last a long time. Yeah. He loves them because they break in, and then they, they, they kind of hit a plateau where they're really right. great for a long time. Um, How long does he like to run on a set of strings? You know, he leans towards. It's kind of a jazz guy, kind of a blues guy yeah. thing. Like, leave them on there. Yeah. You know, leave <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. sweat. So yeah. um, I, I kind of. Uh, balance that line uh, you know they sound great when they're fresh right so i'll, I'll talk to him about it and yeah. some guitars he wants changed a little quicker So, like when you feel like some tuning issues you it's, change that's pretty much the line yeah. that's when i say hey you know <laughs> on that one or this one and uh, he's like yeah fine you know whatever of course like anyone that plays nylon string we leave those yeah. those just season and, and age well but um but the main guitar the jazz guitar, we, we we change them pretty regularly yeah um especially with the trio when we're on the road yeah. and playing pretty long sets. Um, those get changed every couple of days. Um, the Roland maybe once a week, because that's sure. maybe even, even 10 days sometimes. Yeah, I don't he'll play know. that. I don't know why they're even making a difference on that. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, they're, they're regular guitar strings. Yeah. And, and again, whenever we're using it in the trio, he plays it as a regular guitar briefly in, in the piece usually, and okay. then cranks up the synth. Yeah, It's actually a really good guitar. It's like a... A mid '70s Yamaha with a double cutaway, that kind of heavy wood. Sure. It's Les Paulish a little bit, a little lighter. Uh -huh. It's it's a nice guitar as just yeah. a guitar. Yeah. So um, we keep those fresh, but and then the acoustics let those go a little longer too. Uh, yeah. He likes those kind of beat up, yeah. and and uh, sounding warm. But um, yeah, another Pat Metheny model. Okay. And this Very one's cool. on a stand. We use these K and M stands that are great. You know, they they make an electric and a. Uh, and the stand, one. because he's moving you know, on this show, yeah. jumping between all of them. All these different guitars as yeah. he sets up his uh, MIDI clips and MIDI yeah. loops in, or audio loops in Ableton. So he's moving from instrument to instrument. 
um, and um, this is just one of them, so, so yeah. he can have one on his back or right. run over to it real quick. Wild. Yeah. Okay, great. So okay. this is another famous guitar. This is the a Guild D40, yeah. and it's um, we're in Nashville, so it's in Nashville <laughs> tuning. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, great. We tuned it special for yeah but, uh, but no th this guitar though if people look um there was an old guild ad if you just look for it old magazine ad and pat's playing this so this is on a lot of those early records on uh pat Metheny group very early records that acoustic sound uh phase dance and a lot of those songs um just a really great guitar used it in one piece in the show um there's been some mods of course like some of the not nah, that's yeah, a different pickup and, tuner into you know pickup yeah and, and that's what's great too. He he's happy to customize guitars. There's no kind of right. like keeping well, it, you know, even vintage. Even 175, like he he took that, put that whole. I mean, he he put that pickup in the bridge himself. Right. When he was Back a in kid. the day. Yeah, yeah. No, there's yeah, fearless. Not shy at all, yeah. but just <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's yeah. about their tools, you know. Yeah. So make them, you know, yeah. do what you can, yeah. um, do what you like, and and make them, you know, operational. Yeah. Really great guitar. All I can say is a uh, piece of history. This is yeah. the oldest one, actually. It's older than the Roland oh, wow. that we have on the road right, right now. Right, um, very cool. Yeah. Okay, so, well, let's look then, at one more. Yeah. This one's a, a baritone, one of the three baritones we have on the road. Another beautiful Linda Manzer guitar. Wow. You can see it's kind of a long scale thing with fan frets. Yeah. So uh, we got that going on. Um, as always, it's got the mic in there. By the way, the mics are um, AMT, Applied oh, okay. Microphone Technology. I don't know that it's company. on some kind of shock mount. Yeah, thing. so we can move wow. it around. You can just shift the angle and kind of get it, you know, oh, wow. XLR out. Um, the um, tuning on this is uh, a, bar a baritone tuning, A, D, G, C, E, A. Okay. Um, so same relationship, actually, as a, you know, standard tuned guitar. Um, interval wise um, what, else, what else is in here this uh, a fisherman pickup transducer pickup okay. and he, he likes to put an on off switch in all his guitars which is great so you can set the volume perfectly yeah and then just flip it on what a great idea yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and he's not afraid to put holes in guitars yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> not at all and um, this is another thing you might have seen on guitars uh, you can grab you can grab a pick real quick oh that one's a little too stuck in there but yeah <laughs> You can yeah. grab a pick. Okay, what picks does, does he normally use? A little sidebar, one of my jobs is to make sure and check the picks and get them all in there, and you have to be able to go like that. Okay. Because they can stick, so you have to. Right. But yeah, uh, what a great idea again, too, because, again, he's about uh, uh, getting to the goal, which yeah. is you need to pick really fast. Yeah. And there's so many, so many other ways people do picks on tables, on the pick. How great of an idea. <laughs> it's yeah, right there. Very you know, utilitarian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so I've seen people put those little pick dispensers back here, sure. but even that, you got to kind of. Yeah. Um, what kind of picks? These are, I don't know the millimeter, but pretty thin. Uh, the Diadarios. Oh, yeah, we Diodarios. use those. Yeah. He, on his strumming axes, he uses those pretty thin ones. And then uh, this, I don't know, it's like a. 50 or something, yeah. 50, 60. Okay, yeah, again, Diodario. Yeah, Diodario does custom picks for him. Um, and that's the pick he uses on a lot of the acoustics, too. Oh, okay. So, you know, pretty rigid pick, but still, you know, flexible. Sure. Um, so, yeah, that's another Manzer. We use, uh, on all our guitars, we use uh, tuners. Uh, we, we use uh, some Diodario tuners, and we use these. We love these, the TC Electronics. The oh, yeah. uh, the polytune ones, sure. where he tunes the whole all six strings at once. Uh, you probably saw them; they're on all the yeah. guitars. <laughs> and that's another thing too. Uh, there's always a tuner, right? And uh, you know, I know there's a big debate with guitarists on clip tuners. <laughs> we love them because yeah. there's always one there. Sure. And um, you know, and I, I I love the TC tuners actually. And I've I've got a Peterson. I've I've used the Korg rack mounts. I've yeah. used all the Boss ones. Yeah. Uh, there's another brand I'm forgetting. Uh, TC, man, they're new ones, yeah. especially so spot on. And, and I, I use them in conjunction with other ones sometimes. Right. So they're Tracks really fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and they're really sensitive. What I do a lot, too, is tune with the clip on and with the tuner. 
And what you can see there is if you're starting to head towards some intonation stuff, or yeah. that's another little thing where um, it, it should be in tune. Yeah, right. Both the resonance of the guitar and the electronics. Right. But if it's not, you know, sometimes something's up. Yeah. But um, a lot of very precise tuning on this tour. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Pat's ears are, you know. Um, but I'm lucky I worked for Steve Howe right before this, and he's. Yeah another player where wow i mean everyone wants to be in tune sure you have to be but i've been lucky that the past couple people i've worked for have been just tuning uh uh jedis yeah so right. yeah you really got to be on it so the pressure is the on. pressure's on yeah. ani defranco tour with her last oh, year yeah. her ears are wow oh, that's great wow you know um and i'll say real quick since we're doing some anecdotes too the that tour was one of the toughest tours I ever did. She's really? she's amazing to work for, but uh, it's not a but. But she also, think they'd be really chill. Well, it's chill. <laughs> the hang is chill. Her, her yeah. crew, she's amazing. Yeah. But every song is a different alternate tuning. Oh wow! So you're you're switching guitars, and sometimes the song the the, the guitar on song one yeah. has a different tuning on song four. Ooh! And they're all custom t tunings. So you might have a a. a 50 year old guitar on the second song, you've got to retune it for song five with a capo. Oh yeah. And that's the whole night. So yeah. I had a lot of fun on her gig because it was super challenged, yeah, super yeah. challenged. I mean, this is really challenging. Oh my God. But, uh, but, but Ani was amazing to work for and an amazing guitarist. A lot of people don't realize how good she is. Right. But um, you know, little detraction there, just talking oh, yeah. about no, tuning. Cool. Well, and, and, yeah. This has been great. Now I want to see the madness going on on stage on, yeah. the, on the rest of the rig. Okay, so we've covered guitars and now we're uh, kind of in the mothership, right? That's <laughs> good. the control center. Yeah, good, good word for it, John. <laughs> Andre, this is, you know, every, talk, every tech I've talked to, I can't imagine anybody having a more complex job than you. I mean, look <laughs> at this, man. How well, does it... Give us a quick rundown. Sure, sure. Well, I'll, I'll, I always say in this tour, there's two layers. There's software and there's hardware. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't do a lot with the software layer, which is the orchestra, which we, we've, we've talked about. Um, but the hardware layer is complicated, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, basically, it starts with his three main guitar signals, which is the guitar synth, his signature Pat Metheny Ibanez. Sure. And the third slot is either his Taylor 8 string or his baritone nylon. Those three are selected by a Laylee box, Laylee yeah, three sure. to one. Yeah. And then it hits the um, Game Changer uh, Plus pedal, the sustain pedal. Right. So all of those could sustain. Yeah. Uh, that sends to our Leslie, so you can get that nice Leslie thing, little guitar thing. And the signal then goes to the Kemper. And in the Kemper, we pick a patch based on which one of those four or five guitars sure. we're using. So that's like the, the basic skeleton of the whole thing. Um, and then from there, those, how he's listening to those signals. One thing about Pat, and uh, uh, you know, I, I know there's some, some nerds who've followed his systems for years. <laughs> he, he always has a surround thing. Uh -huh. If you go back to his very earliest systems, there's always amps and speakers around him. Right. And so that's been fascinating to learn that from him and to, to keep moving forward with that. So when he plays any of the above, he's hearing it in these Yamaha uh, powered, you know, yeah. powered speakers there. Uh, he's got it there, he's got it in the four by 10. Okay. And some of it he gets in these Bose L1s. So he's got a real surround sound. Oh yeah. Yeah, some of his internal, uh, all the guitars have internal mics. You've noticed all the guitars I'm plugging two things right, in. Right, right. Uh, there's a quarter inch with your regular pickup and every guitar outside of the Roland has a mic inside. Yeah. So, so that mic is often in the L1s. In this tour, we haven't really experimented that much with that, but with the trio and other right. groups, he always has the internal guitar there. Yeah. The point is when you play, you're hearing it all around. Yeah. And it's really, I, I suggest, Try that out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Guitarist. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. I, I remember seeing him back, like in the in the Jocko things. It seems like those guys are always playing so close, kind of in, like it, kind of in the round like that. Like, yeah. Maybe that's what he's 
Well, that's where it started. That, it that. That's a great point. That kind yeah. of jazz thing of just turn down, get close. Yeah, get close. Um, and listen, yeah. He always stands near the drummer, and so he always is really keyed into the rhythmic thing. Right. Um, right. Well, he's definitely near the drums. On yeah, this one. exactly. <laughs> um, other stuff in hardware. So all of the all the electric uh, guitars that I just said they can go into the Kemper. He can loop them. He's got a. Uh, Electro Harmonics 95,000 yeah, okay, looper. So, okay, so what's all on the ground? First the uh, sustain. So sustain. Okay. So for the electric signal, quote unquote, he can loop anything he wants with the EHX 95,000. Right. Uh, and that's, it's a, it's a great looper. It's a six track looper. We're only using two tracks. And those have been around and, um, for a while, right? Yeah, those have been, you know, uh, I'm Still not there. sure, half a dozen years or something. Yeah, yeah. why change? Yeah, they're very cool. Yeah. Uh, he also side chain controls it with some other MIDI commands from that Solman. That's, a, that's from um, Source Audio. Right. And we have a couple of those around. And that's just so that there's some extra commands he can throw sure. in there. Um, okay. Reverse and stuff like that. Right. Um, and then the Infinity Looper, which is a great looper. That's Pigtronics. That's amazing. The sound fidelity in that is really incredible. Um, 48K. Wow. And uh, we're using that on one of those beautiful baritone guitars. Yeah. So he does a just a tiny bit of looping on that, and it okay. sounds fantastic. Um, so that's most of the pedals. This guy here the is Roland? that is a that's a classic. You know, he's had yeah. that for 40 years, God. and he's right. one of the first people to use the Roland guitar synth. And it's one of those things that's on just about every Pat Metheny album. I mean, yeah. I haven't really got yeah. one by one. I know most of his records, but pretty sure it's on every record. Yeah. I mean, the, maybe there's two or three that are. are with an orchestra or something. Right. But um Right. I, I saw him almost forty years ago oh, and wow. he had that guitar. Yeah, yeah. That's it's <laughs> it's, it's a signature. Yeah. Yeah. That and the the one seventy five. Absolutely. Okay. So but as far as like like traditional guitar effects, there's not really not that much. And you know, Pat's sound, uh, again, the historian historian people watching this know He's always had a pretty simple sound. Yeah. Uh, and that's why the Roland is such a departure. Yeah, in, in a way, yeah. yeah. I mean, and in another way, it's hit part of his normal yeah, paintbrush yeah, yeah, right, set, right? Yeah, right, right, right. So, so, but yeah, departure from the quote-unquote, you know, straight-ahead jazz player or whatever, yeah, yeah. which, you know, he never has been, as you know. Yeah. Um, I think, though, uh, being with him almost two years now and, and listening closely now, uh, after listening as a fan for 40 years, the sound of the guitar itself yeah. is what, you know, any really great player, obviously, yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but for Pat, especially the sound of that a jazz guitar, the, the resonance of, it's a hollow guitar. It's got, yeah. So he really goes to that natural sound, hence the microphone inside. Right. You know, that's a big part of uh, getting that. And then getting back to your question, there's not many effects he would ever put on. Yeah. He just raises the volume, a little how, reverb. How often does he engage the Leslie? So the Leslie on this tour is, is just like a fun effect, uh, yeah. a handful of times per yeah. night. He does a, a really um, quote unquote experimental looping moment and, and the nickname for it on the set list is Zero Tolerance for Silence, which <laughs> that's his record of uh, very extreme <laughs> yeah. kind of two dimensional music as he called it. Uh, a lot of people thought, what is this? Some people took it back to the record store. Yeah. So I loved it. It was this yeah. noise side of Pat yeah. that you hear snippets of otherwise. So he does a piece in this show that's just extreme swirling loops of, of the uh, oddly tuned eight string Taylor. On that, he hits the sustain, uh, the, the, the plus pedal a bunch of yeah, times yeah. and you get this beautiful ringing thing with the eight strings. He also does it on some of his solo 175 um, pieces. We call it the 175, that's the Pat Metheny jazz guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We call it that. Yeah, Ibanez, obviously. Ibanez, but, yeah, because yeah, he loves that, that history, the Gibson history. Yeah. Um, so he uses it quite a bit on that. Yeah. And, and it, it really, it's cool. It get like an organ tone, a little sure. pedal tone once in a while. Sure. Yeah. But, the, but for the most part, this whole kind of thing is about loops, the rolling and then running into the Kemper and then and then and then the pretty elaborate monitoring system. Yeah, yeah. Again, the outer monitors are the electric. That's the Kemper's feeding those directly. Yeah. And the 
Myers in in the middle there are more the acoustic monitoring. Okay, um, sure. He can put anything in there, but typically it's the nylon, the baritones. Um, what's with this mysterious orb over so, there? So the orb gets into the, the software half of the equation. Yeah. It's like a yin-yang thing. Yeah. Uh, that uh, There's a couple times he's playing to a rhythm track that he's made before. Yeah. Um, he does both things in this show. He creates tracks live yeah. in front of the audience. Uh, he's, that's, that's so scary. Has it, there been ever... You ever got a little sideways? <laughs> you're out on a limb. Yeah. So, so exactly what that is good for is it's a metronome. Oh, really? So it blinks. Red is one. So red, two, four, red, two, three, oh. four, or whatever the time might be, seven, three, whatever. So we use that with the trio. Yeah. And with the trio, all three people have to kind of glance over and see yeah. where the one it's is. It's like having a conductor. It's like having a conductor. So that's, yeah. that's what that one is. The other one's a record light. So when he hits record, he can yeah. be in or on stage and know, all right, I've made contact with Ableton. And um, so, the, wow. so the software half of this show, um, that's the other MIDI, MIDI pedals too. Uh, any, wow. any of the MIDI pedals really are for stopping and starting and recording yeah. in Ableton. God, um, man. It is all so complex. It, just, <laughs> just, the, just that part is so complex. Yeah. And then what he's playing is just... Exactly. Uh, yeah. it's, it, right, it's, com it's complex music on top of it. Yeah. But um, is it, I, I wonder, if it, it's got to be so hard to just let go of that anxiety and tension of the technical thing and just like flow because he's man he, when he plays it just got such a flow to it you know he, he's he's great at that i think let's remember he's one of the people that embraced technology early on yeah late 70s he right. was yeah. already you know they had an oberheim four voice synth they had yeah. little sequencers and things and as soon as the synclavier was available he's yeah. one of the early adopters uh lexicon all the early right. stuff so he really uh, right. always and, tried technology right right and doing it when, i mean it's it's funny because back then there was that kind of a blowback from jazzers about that stuff. absolutely although miles you know went very yeah weird. that's true <laughs> he, he loved always loved wah wahs and you know, yeah, pete yeah. cozy in the 70s right, and, right right yeah, that's a good co comparison yeah. um so i think yeah, he's very comfortable um yeah. I, I will say too that um again i have very little to do with the software side the only my only involvement i think was uh suggesting the, the looper from Ableton, because I used to use yeah. that with Adrian sure. Ballou. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and what we did was take, and, and our, our production manager, Zach yeah. Rosenberg, who's a great programmer and um, Ableton guy, yeah. he took the, um, the old version of the Ableton program, yeah. added some stuff in. We had some other Max for Live things, and people yeah. help us put some patches in there. But that Ableton program is interesting because it's, it's, he's been using that since yeah. the early days. And we kind of took the, the the live set, as it's called, from years ago, and you know morphed it into this year's version, wow. with a bunch of you know um, MIDI clips being recorded and, and different uh, uh, moves inside Ableton. Um, but again, he he goes over to the computer and edits stuff, and he's written a lot of these programs from scratch, a lot of these patches in the programs. Wow. I mean, he used Digital Performer 1.0, so wow. so. So you raise a great point. He's very comfortable when there's a problem. He's really great with giving us ideas of what it might be. And, uh, yeah. you know, I imagine with the complexity of this rig, there are problems. You know, well, it's funny. <laughs> Today was an interesting day, John, because it, 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 we did some changes that yeah. uh, we've been trying to do for several days. And yeah. today kind of had some extra time. Yeah ran into a little bit of problem here yeah. and there. And plus we had some repairs because we're in Nashville, yeah, yeah, right, some great right. luthiers. Yeah. So kind of all this stuff collided. Plus we're in this beautiful museum setting, yeah. which limited our time. Yeah. So you kind of saw yeah. like some tech yeah, juggling. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. But, well, uh, you, you know, are the hardest working man in show business. <laughs> you know, I, well, I, I, thank you. Some of my, some of my heroes like Thomas Nordegg, you know him? That's, you know, he's yeah. the one of the hardest working. Yeah. Or Frank Robbins, who, yeah, yeah, who's yeah. with yeah. Mo and Whole Notes. But, but, but I appreciate that. I try to work hard and I look up to these incredible techs. Yeah. Um, I also want to give a shout out because she's never done one of these interviews, but Carolyn Krizan, who was, I, I don't know. yeah, she's Pat's, he's only had two techs in oh, 40 man. years. Wow. So Carolyn was his tech from about 84 till 2002. Wow. You know, and I, it's funny because before I even met her, I'd go to his shows and she's like this Jedi, <laughs> quietly moving around, yeah. grabbing guitars, yeah. never said a word, kind of expressionless, just, and I was just 
in awe of how hard this woman worked right. and to become a, a close friend and a, a, she's a mentor and yeah. she's taught me so much. So, um, but she never did stuff like this. And yeah. she's no social media, yeah. all that. Nobody but, does. <laughs> Nobody but talk does. about hardest working, you know, she did this stuff with no cell phone, no GPS. Yeah. You couldn't look up manuals online. Right. So I always honor her and I try to really raise the bar right, right. For, for her and, and uh, cause she, is one of the backbones of decades right. of all those shows we went to. Yeah. Uh, and and um, so I look up to her and I look up to, again, all these other techs, but um, thank you. I do yeah. work hard and, and um, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen you guys since, I don't know, six or seven years ago <laughs> yeah. with, uh, with Adrian. We that's did. right, right, right. And that, that's yeah. a crazy rig too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, right, right. I like the crazy rigs, yeah. yeah. Well, Andre, it's such a pleasure meeting you. Thanks for taking us through this. Absolutely. Great Safe to meet travels. you, travels. Yeah. See you all down the road. Thanks, folks. Guitar tour, find me there. Yeah, you'll put all the links and stuff, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs>